The herb that we're discussing today is guajir, and guajir is an upper herb listed in the Shandong Banzhao. Now we know that upper herbs are defined as substances that are safe to take every day and in large doses. Upper plants will not harm the body. They do not have toxicity. And we're told that we want to use these if we desire to lighten the body, benefit the qi, and lengthen the lifespan. So when we know that an herb is an upper herb, we should also interpret that unless we use a very large dose, that herb is not inherently powerful enough to make great changes overnight. And when we look at the application of guajir, especially in formulas from the Shanghan Lun, if you convert the liang measurement that was used in the Shanghan Lun to what is agreed to be around 15 grams today, that means that we're looking at 45 grams of guajir in a formula like guajir tang. And that's going to be really important because as we read about the actions of guajir, we're going to see that it has these unblocking and really powerful getting the yang to the surface actions. And if it is an upper herb, then I think it's likely that we need a lot more of it to create that push and that yang. Because like I said, the Shenmong Bansao defines upper herbs as things that are a little bit more supplements. Chen Shou Yan tells us, Often, the Shenmong Bansao did not design uh, upper herbs as medicines. These are a little bit more like supplements, things that are light in effect. So we want to think about that in terms of doses. And that certainly today defined how we brewed our guajir. Here's our guajir. You can see how tiny these little pieces are. Guajir are the tender, thin twigs of the cinnamon tree, which is very different compared to rogue which is that thicker bark of the tree that's been growing for a long time. The chi of that kind of bark that's coming from the tree, many, many years of growing, compared to the twigs that sprout out that are new and tender, it's going to be very different. So today we decided to brew 45 grams of guajir. Now, that's not necessarily a dose that we use on a daily basis. We're not turning to 45 grams of guajir, but I wanted to taste that this morning so that we can understand one of the herbs that's in the formula guajir tang, how loud, how moving, how warm, what does it feel like in our body to have that kind of heavy dose? It's also going to clarify a lot of the other herbs that are paired with guajir, like bai shao, pairing equal amounts of guajir with bai shao. How is that going to change our experience? Because today we're only going to taste the guajir. So when we brew herbs, we do one herb in a thermos overnight, and that's what we did with the guajir. And this morning, after 12 hours of steeping in boiled water in a double-walled thermos, I have this liquid, and this is the guajir. And you can see this lovely, rich color. And the aroma is very, very light, but it is obviously a cinnamon, spicy, sweet smell. So in tasting the guajir, we have to see what we think with the plant that we have on hand at this moment. The most noticeable thing at first is, while the water doesn't look very thick, the taste is very thick. I would have thought that there was a little bit of um, jergansau or something with it. It's noticeably sweet and thick and warm and spicy, even to the point that it just stays a little bit on the tip of my tongue. I feel like the sensation has stopped kind of right about here and hasn't gone down the back of my mouth because this richness, this thickness has gone in and sort of stayed put. My mouth is lightly spicy, a little bit like I had a piece of cinnamon gum here and warm and very, very sweet. Now, when we look into books like the Bansao Gangmu, uh, Li Shurjun did an amazing job of gathering all of the comments in major materia medicas through history. And he didn't discriminate saying, this person's really great, I'm going to put these thoughts, but this person is less great. He just kind of collected all of the thoughts that he could find from across China in major materia medicas. And what's so beneficial about that is you can see when scholars disagree, especially on the flavor and the nature of the plant. The Neijing tells us that the flavor of the plant is what is going to define its effect. If a plant is very acrid, it is going to create a lot more movement and dispersing because the Neijing tells us that acrid flavors create dispersing and movement in the body. 
If a plant is very sweet, the Neijing tells us that sweet flavors affect slowing and harmonizing. So what's so interesting about this Guajir is that it does, all by itself without any pairing, already have a fairly profound acrid taste and also a very palpable sweet taste. So the Shennong Bansao told us that Guajir is acrid and warm and is not toxic. Zhang Yan Su says acrid and sweet, and the qi is actually mildly hot. And the Ban Cao Zheng Yi says that Guajir is acrid, sweet, and hot. Now again, that may not seem like a big deal, but if one book says acrid and warm, then we may think we really need to pair uh, cinnamon with a lot of sweet herbs if that's important to us. Other books are telling us that Guajir already is acrid and sweet, and that's certainly my experience today in this next couple of weeks with this tasting so um, kind of memorable for me, uh, I will be inclined to pair Guajir with less sweet herbs because I'm already having this sweet experience. Now in terms of uh, actions, the Shenong Ban Cao tells us that Guajir treats cough when qi is ascending and rebellious. It also treats knotted qi and B syndromes of the throat, as well as vomiting. That Guajir benefits the joints, nourishes the middle and increases the qi, and the Shandong Ban Cao tells us that long-term use will tong the spirit, or kind of course out the spirit, clear the spirit, so that this jing shen, this sort of essence in the physicality is clear, and therefore the body feels light and one does not feel as if they are aging. The Mingyi Bielu also talked about Guajir and tells us similar things, that Guajir is going to create acrid dispersing movement, therefore it's going to treat heart pain, wind in the upper part of the body, warming the tendons and opening the vessels. The Bansao Sibian Lu has a pages, 20 plus pages of commentary on Guajir. But what's amazing about this commentary is that we have to think about uh, the acrid flavor. The Ban Cao Sibian Lu refers to the Neijing and says, the Su one tells us that acrid and sweet herbs will spread and disperse, and this is yang in action. And if we want to understand Guajir, then we can look at its clinical application. And so the Sub Ban Cao Sibian Lu tells us if we look at Guajir Gan this is a formula that is very acrid and sweet and we're told in this situation that that formula stops sweating and we have to think about that because Guajir is often indicated as an herb that creates sweat. We can understand that light dispersing yang warming nature is much more likely to create this movement. It's going to invigorate the yang. It's going to warm and flow. In Chinese, a very common saying is that guajir xing er bu shou, that it creates this movement and not, does not create gathering, does not stay put. And we can expect that when we're matching a warm or hot natured herb, which is yang in action, an acrid flavored herb, which is yang in action. And then again, how much is the sweet tempering that movement because sweet will inherently slow down the movement of acridity. And so the Bansao Sibian Lu says, Sure, Gansao, a Guajir Gansao Tom, stops sweating because the sweet of that formula is more than the acrid of that formula. And so he says we should not be thinking about Guajir as an herb for sweat uh, because actually, depending on what we're pairing Guajir with, it harmonizes the yin, yin and the way. It doesn't just push out sweat. It brings the yang up to the surface. And we should think about Guajir as a substance to benefit the yang. And again, um, another book, the Ban Cao Zheng Yi, tells us that Guajir is able to push evils or pernicious out by creating a sweat, but it can also assist the yang to return to the surface so that sweat that's leaking out stops. And that's a great thing for us to pay attention to because if we look at actions only and we say Guajir stops sweating in deficiency, um, that doesn't make sense when we also read that Guajir creates sweat. If we understand things in terms of flavor and nature, in my uh, opinion, I think that it makes a lot more sense uh, what books have said and, again, tasting the herb that we have in the clinic at this moment. Um, the Ban Cao Zheng Yi reminds us that the thin twigs are called Guajir, whereas the thick or the coarse portions of the tree are called Guaymu, and that if we want a light, 
raising moving property, we have to turn to Guager that we um, will not get that action with Rogue Way. And so again, the yin and the yang properties of a plant really help us understand how it's going to act. And so this very thin, twiggy, small, tender pieces of guajer, uh, it should still be a little bit, have some yin in it. It shouldn't be completely dried out. There should be this essential oil aroma of the cinnamon in there. And because it's so light, it's going to be much more flowing and unblocking in the body than obviously Rogue which is quite dense and heavy. That makes sense why it would create this stay put warmth. So again, as we taste our Guajer and understand its individual qualities, I absolutely agree that it is warm and acrid and surprisingly more sweet than I would have thought. It's spicy, sweet cinnamon smell is about an 8 out of 10. Again, it's very, very thick, very sweet, almost like you know, this water doesn't look like it's as viscous as it tastes as soon as it enters my mouth. It really is going to lead me to change how much gansau, how much dadzau I'm pairing this herb with. Um, the acridity is also very, very loud. It's staying lingering in my mouth um, really from my first sip till now. I would put that acrid um, about an 8 out of 10 also, but I would put the sweet almost as much, 7 out of 10, in noticeably sweet. This does feel like it's warming in my body. I already feel a little bit like I'm warmer. The back of my arms are warmer. I would absolutely expect this herb to warm and flow. I feel warm and sort of tingling in my fingers and down my arms. What's interesting is I don't feel as palpably warm, say, from my rib cage down as I do in my face, in the back of my arms, and in my fingers. So that matches that lightness, that yang quality of guajer, that it's easily going to go up, it's easily going to create movement, but that movement is going to be a much more upward and outward movement than downward. If we really need to warm the feet, if we really need to create flow in the legs, I think we're going to need to pair it with something a little bit heavier to get that warmth and that flow into the lower parts of the body. Now again, today we are drinking 45 grams of wager and that's not necessarily um, our starting place but I wanted to feel what 45 grams of wager feels like so that this week next week the week after it helps me fine-tune the dose that I think I need when I'm matching it to my patients symptoms so please buy some wager brew it up and taste it see what you think